Hey, what's up? Matt Wyatt here. Time to take a look at the Florida spring game. Go Gators! It's the first one under Dan Mullen after he took the job, left Mississippi State. You know, the thing about it is, it's just, it's just a spring game. Like, it's pretty vanilla for everybody. But I think if you look closely, you might see a thing or two that is consistent with what his offense has looked like the last several years at Mississippi State with, you know, they had success with what he probably is going to try to install and do there at Florida this spring. Let's take a look. There's a three receiver formation up top to the wide side of the field. And the only guy uh, receiver in the boundary is the tight end lined up on the line. But you have a zone coverage look with a free safety up top and cushion on the corner. And this guy in the slot is kind of like your strong safety. And so it looks like zone on the pre-snap. And the route is, I think, predicated on the zone coverage. I think your receivers and quarterback are reading this. They see zone with a guy up top, and they hook up here one and two outside guys getting on top. The quarterback just reads the underneath zone coverage. And again, it's a third man inside who finds the throwing lane. It just looks to me like it's a deal where receivers and quarterback read the route, and the route is predicated on whether it's zone or man. Now, if you look back at Dak Prescott, Mississippi State in 2014, similar deal, right? Three receivers to the field. The guy who's kind of on this hash boundary is on, you know, tight end only. That's the the thing. And they give you a zone look in pre-snap, but watch it turn into man-to-man coverage on the snap. As soon as you get the play fake, you can see Prescott's eyes are already up here where this safety is coming down in here to play the run. And everybody else has jumped into straight up man-to-man coverage with no deep help. And so I think that's why instead of these choice routes against zone, in this example, these guys read it and everybody's taken off trying to win big against man-to-man. So they're reading it on the fly. And you have a couple touchdowns, you just miss him. Watch the route. See, third man inside, he's taken off, and his eyes are here. And when he sees that guy come up, he knows he's gone. I believe if the safety had dropped and you see zone, he's going to find an area to hook up against that zone and try to find a throwing lane. Really nice route right there to get by him and uh, gets a little room, but the throw is just a little bit too far outside. I know it's a spring game, but it's a third and five situation. They're treating it like a game, and they're just going to run that screen up to the top and get some linemen out in front. It's a third down play. Allows you to get a guard and a tackle out here on a smaller defender, and if you just get one block with that out on the edge, you can make yards with a screen play. And we've seen Mullen in his career go to screens a good bit on third downs. This was a great third down screen call from Dan Mullen in that 2014 LSU game. They're empty. Three by two, and the two receivers into the boundary and watch the action of the quarterback. They motion around on the snap the ball, turns his head here. They really sell it well. This is the screen man firing off the line of scrimmage back into the boundary. Flips his hips, and now you've got screen work, and tackle is out, guard is out, center going to come out later, and he gets behind there, and on third and ten, run a screen into the boundary, and you get a first down out of it in a big ball game. Again, you don't see a ton of these throwback screens in the offense or having over the years, but some really timely play calling get the defense off balance, especially when they're over pursuing. And that was a really big play, and they scored a few plays later. Two receivers up top, two into the boundary that are stacked up on top of each other. And even though it looks like two safeties pre-snap, they're going to rotate this thing to man. The route is something you just got to be able to do against man-to-man on third downs in big-time football, and that is double slants and just take it and get that completion. On the snap, safety rotates back to the middle of the field. He comes up. Now it's man-to-man, and a quarterback reads it that way. You have to be able to make this throw, and it's something Mullen has done in his career. Here's an example of a third down Dan Mullen's Mississippi State team back in 2014. Three receivers up top, single receiver down here. When you get a matchup, you can win on a slant, especially on third down. Just take it. This Dak Prescott is a quarterback. Eyes in the middle, turn, flip, nice, easy completion on third and three. Should be easy. They make it look easy, and Mullen likes to throw that slant on third down if he's got a guy who can win that route on the outside. One more thing about the route. Um, back when this big guy, Deronio Wilson, was running this route for Mississippi State, he was always a threat to get to the outside, and then he would get that back shoulder throw on corners, and I think that's why this corner is a little bit influenced outside. 
is he's already thinking back shoulder, so he wants to be on that outside shoulder and gives up the slant route pretty easily there on a third down. Here's slants to a three-receiver side against uh, Alabama. Empty formation, three up top, two underneath. Just throw the slant for a first down. Now, again, I do think you have to remember, here's the thing about Dan Mullen. I really do believe he's as good as anybody in the country at identifying what it is that this player, that player, his quarterback can do, what they do very well, and then you kind of build around that. In that 10 years at Mississippi State, here's what Dan Mullen's offense was built off of. Number one, figure out what the quarterback can do and do it really, really well, often, execute it, be consistent. Number two, run the ball with that zone stuff, get defenders out of position and read one guy, right? So use, you know, eliminate one of their guys just by reading it. This is a staple of the Dan Mullen spread offense. Three receivers to one side with an H-back tight end, single receiver down here inside the numbers, gonna zone it back this way and read this guy with the quarterback. So on the snap, First thing happening, quarterback reading the defensive end who you're leaving unblocked. If the end goes upfield, it's going to be a give to the back. If the end is here, it'll be a keep for the QB. End stayed out. Now the running back has the ball. They've got it sealed and pulling the backside tackle this way. Now he's looking inside to the linebacker, but it's clogged up. The back bounces it. Got an unblocked corner, but you're going to take that one-on-one -on -one all day and expect your running back to break the tackle. You make six yards after contact. And down here on the goal line, you're going to pull this tackle around and follow him in a zone run scheme. Watch the play first, and then we'll take a look at a couple of things. Pull him in there, back follows him, touchdown, and right there on the goal line. If you go back and you watch, it's possible it could be RPO built in there also for the quarterback. So the first read, this defensive end coming off the edge. So as the tackle pulls to get involved in that backside run, see the quarterback's reading him, and if that end is upfield or stays out, then the give's going to come back here on the zone run scheme. But as you see what's happening up top, you got kind of a stalking here by the number one tight end. The H-back's out here looking back at the quarterback. So you could have an RPO run pass option kind of built into it if the end were to go down. If quarterback keeps, he could pull up and run or either flip it out here uh, to the guy outside. So that's a possibility. Back to the run game, though. It's blocked back double team here a pin on the outside, and uh, here comes the tackle pulling back up inside. He's one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, and you see this uh, quite often. Here's a similar deal. This is last year against Alabama. Uh, three by one, the formation. This is all about the run game, the quarterback reading. And so instead of uh, powering this thing with a tackle back here to the right, uh, they're going to run it back into the boundary, right tackle pulling back up in the middle, running power right behind his rear end. Key there, center and left guard, that's a double team on the backside. Right guard's got a tackle turned out, and so the offensive tackle pulls, and he's power lead right there on the middle linebacker. Run off his block. From behind, snap of the ball, one and two here. He's got a win right there to create space for your tackle to power this thing up in here and look up the middle linebacker. Run off his block, and it's a touchdown. I think what Florida's offense ultimately winds up being in the fall and in the next few years, it's all going to be about the players they have and what they actually can do very well. All right, thanks for watching. And do me a favor, if you don't already follow me on social media, find me on Twitter, at Radio Wyatt. It's a pretty good little uh, bridge to everything else I'm doing, sometimes Instagram, Facebook, other stuff as well. Just at Radio Wyatt on Twitter. Look me up. Give me a follow if you don't already. I really appreciate that. All right, see you next time.